I use this pom-pom that I bought for hats that I don't use for hats because I don't make hats. Instead, it's on my bunny's butt. Hello! Today's video is going to be back to my normal videos. I'm not doing a crochet kit, though I'm amazed at how many of y'all enjoyed my suffering. Y'all are obviously mostly sadists, which I get. I enjoy to watch people suffer sometimes. I understand that, and I'm so glad y'all enjoyed the video so much. I was gonna see if y'all wanted me to do more of those. Let me know in the comments, and if you know of any awful kits you want to see me suffer through, my email is in my description. Please feel free to email me some ideas of some insufferable crochet kits you would like to see me do, and I'll do some more of those. And you will notice that GW is right back here. He's watching you. This way y'all can see GW and just imagine what he could bring for your holidays this year and maybe give you some ideas of your own sausage mouth egg bags y'all might want to create for the future. In today's video, I'm gonna go over some things that I have been making. I'm gonna talk to you about two books that I've worked out of and a couple of my acquisitions and a little happy mail that I got. Let's go over the crochet books first. Now I really had my bar set low on this book when I got it. That book is Ami Grimmy Flower Babies. I thought it was cute. I've had it in my wish list for a while, but I had been putting it off because I was like, eh, I don't know if I really like all these designs of these dolls enough to get it and work out of it, but I'm really glad I did. I think my impression of these dolls was that they were larger, but they're, they're tiny. Hence the name baby. That's what that means tiny and they are. It is in UK terms and that took me a minute to adjust because I have to get my head around UK terms. This book is actually by a man which I think is really neat and his name is Bosden Braver and Bosden, I don't know if that's right, I don't know if you say both words or just one word if he just goes by Bos or if he goes by Bosden or Din, I don't I don't know. Now with this book, you're creating one main baby pattern. All of these dolls is the same body pattern and it works up really fast. You have the option of doing two types of leaves. I use DK yarn in all of mine and then I chose three different flowers that I wanted to make. These are just so cute and I put mine in these little terracotta pots that I had and they look like they're little babies in their little houses. They only have these little twig arms, one little leaf on the back. It's like they're swaddled. There's virtually no sewing on these. The only thing you're kind of sewing on are the arms, the leaf, and you put the top on. Their hats are created separately from the body. This is Daphne Daffodil. I made her with my Sheepies yarn on the top. This is my Happy Place yarn on the bottom and this is Stylecraft DK for her face. The patterns are really easy. They're well written. The thing that I really liked in the way he wrote the patterns is each row is color coordinated to the yarn that you're using. I thought that that was a really neat way to let you know when you needed to change colors. At the beginning of each flower you're fixing to begin, he gives you kind of a brief synopsis of what you're going to be doing in that pattern and then he gives you the pattern. My suggestion is read what he has written because it does give you some tips for when you are making that particular flower baby. The book is put together a little bit different, but everything is color coded according to the flower, which is nice because each flower has their own color and the pages are that color for when you're flipping through so you know which flower you're going to. And I've really liked that because that's very organized and I like organized things. That was really a nice touch for somebody that's anal like myself. I appreciated that. My very favorite one that I made is this little one. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I love her so much. And her name is Darcy Dahlia. Just love the colors for her little flower petals. This is Ginger, Ginger Gerber Daisy. She has a good syllable going on there. Again, it's my Sheepies yarn, happy place for the bottom, and my Style Craft DK for her face. These work up so fast. You can create your own little garden and just sit them in a little window and have your little flower babies looking at you. And this is a great book if you are looking for something really quick and easy to work up for the springtime. I do recommend this book. It is in UK terms, so 
you do need to be familiar with that and you're not doing only single crochet. You are doing multiple other kinds of stitches so you do need to be familiar with those stitches in UK terms. It is well written and I really love these little guys. The next book I've recently been working out of is this one and it is called Crochet Home by Emma Lamb and I adore this book. If y'all loved my flower pillow, it was from this book. This book is written in all UK terms. And again, you're doing various kinds of stitches. So you really need to be familiar with how to convert those stitches if you're used to US terms to UK terms. It will mix you up if you are not paying attention really close. This book is so cute. That flower pillow, I actually modified from two patterns that are in this book. One was called the rose cushion and the other was the candy corn cushion. The candy corn cushion was perfectly round and it had the bobbles on the back. And the rose cushion was the front of my flower cushion, but then I modified the circle going around because it was actually supposed to be a square pillow, but I turned it into a round pillow. So that was my main modification, but it was a combination of those two pillows that I did. And y'all don't need to worry about that pillow. Everybody was all on me to give that to my mother. Y'all, all that little woman has to do is blink her little plastic eyes and she gets whatever she wants. Y'all have no idea how many times her little cute please of may I have it please have gotten her stuff. We have a faux fur coat. She has gotten necklaces, rings, bracelets. People give her whatever she asks for because she's cute. Don't y'all worry. She got it. Don't harp on me anymore about the pillow. I promise she got the pillow. There's so many things in here I want to make. Since I can't sew very well, and my main thing with sewing is I can sew a straight line. That's not my problem. I cannot cut fabric to save my life. I have all the rulers. I have the little roller cutter. I have everything you're supposed to have for that, but I cannot do it. And I've done it multiple times and tried and tried and tried, and I can't. I gave up. But in here, there are patterns that make things look like they're quilted. So you can do like the star, you can do little patchwork sort of things, and it's really, really cute. So if you love the look of a quilt, but don't want to sew for a quilt, this book is a great addition to your stash. There's also bunting in here, which in the US we actually call that garland, but y'all call it bunting over in other countries. There is this really cute wreath that I'm probably gonna be making because I have this thing for wreaths. There's really pretty pillows, pot holders, trivets, and they're different than any other ones I've ever seen because they're two layered. One layer is a certain color and the layer on top is a different color. So the bottom layer actually peeks up through the top layer and it's so pretty. So I highly recommend this book. If you like to crochet things that are for your home or if you're in a pillow phase like me and you wanna try and do something besides just amigurumi that challenges you but is also relaxing, this is a great book to look at. I'll be sure and put a link to both of these books down in my description box below. The next thing I did was another character for my Pika Pal 3 book. And I didn't want it to look like what she had in the book. I wanted this to be extra and I made it extra y'all. I finally found a use for some of my sparkly yarn. Here it is. It's a whale. This whale I have mixed feelings about. I love the way the look turned out. My problem with this is anytime you're crocheting in the round your stitches automatically shift to the right if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed they're going to shift to the left. Because of that twist the body's not even here on the bottom. And it's not because it's not even, it's the twist. If I were to do this again, I'd probably tweak the pattern to where I didn't have that twist and it was even all the way around. But because this was my first time doing the pattern, I needed to see visually what it would look like so I would know how to correct that twist. I have named this Wilma Will. In the book, she actually is supposed to be wearing a hat and has a little buoy that she sits on, but I didn't want mine to have that. I wanted her to be plain. Also, I think I have a little bit of tennis elbow right now and crocheting hurts just, just a bit. I needed to take a little break. So I thought she's gonna be okay to be naked. Most whales are naked in real life. Wilma said she'd take one for the team and not wear a hat. So she just is naked. I used my Hobie Universe yarn and so it has sparkle and she's color changing, which I thought was perfect for the ocean. Her little fins have bobbles on them. So she has them weird bumps that whales have. I don't know what those are called, but she has the bumps, like the pimples on her 
on her arms. I sound really stupid saying a whale has zits, but you know what I'm saying, those bumps that they have. On her, you're supposed to be crocheting on top to make these little lines that whales have. And I just chose to have mine go along where the color change was to hide the little jog and I covered it up. And I used my little kawaii eyes, which a lot of y'all have been asking about these little eyes. I will put a link for those also down below. I bought them in a pack. I think there's four or five sizes of them. They don't go up super large. What the sizes are, I don't know, but they're small, smallish, bigger, a little bigger than that, and biggest. Those are the sizes, it's like five of them. I love the little shinies and eyes that they give the characters and I love her, even though she's kind of not working with my OCD real well. If I just put her to one side and you don't look at the other side, I'm much happier, but don't look that way because there's a crookedness and it kind of drives me crazy, but it's not my fault, I follow the pattern. Yawn even says that in the pattern. There will be a twist, that's part of the beast is the twist with crochet. The next thing I have, I'm not completely done with. I had seen this pattern a year or two ago. It was really floating around a lot in the summertime, I believe, last year, and everybody was talking about it. And I really wanted to make it then, but I just never got around to it. But I finally got around to it. And again, it's not finished. I was gonna show it to you anyways. And it's this. It's a hand cactus. In the pattern, you actually crochet a little pot around here and she gives you three options. One is just a plain terracotta pot, one is a pot that's kind of rainbow striped, and the other is a pot that says something I can't say to you. But if I were to say that, it's really bad. I can gesture that to you though with this if you are catching on there. This hand will make the gesture what the pot said. My kids on spring break, they bought me back this adorable little sloth. I don't know whether it was supposed to be like a planner or a coffee cup, but I think it's so cute. And it looks like he's thinking. And I thought, he's thinking of what his hand cactus should say. That's what he's thinking about. Also, I've hidden my own candy inside of here and I'm not sorry. I know nobody's gonna try to lift up my cactus to find it because I've met those people. They're, they aren't gonna put in the effort to do that. But now the neat thing about this hand is that I can pose it. There's wire in here. Even though I overstuffed his fingers, they look like snossages. I can pose his hand to say different things like peace or I love you. I can pose it to say that or hook em horns or another phrase that I'm not gonna make because this is, that's not appropriate and I'm not gonna show y'all that, but I can do that. It's similar to what Cindy Kitty does, except it's a cactus hand that does it. And I really liked having that option. I think this sort of thing would be great if you are in an office and you need to warn people to not to. Don't mess with me, this. All you have to do, peace or not, not peace. And they know, st stay back. He is going to be somewhere off to the side here in my craft room so that I can see him and just smile and some days he might be happy and some days he might not be. And that's okay. We all have feelings and sometimes we just feel them and show them hard. Now the next thing I made was a free pattern from MJ Off The Hook Designs and I think I put this one on my Instagram because I remembered to and it's this bunny. I use my skein toned yarn and this is three stranded. If you watch her video, the entire pattern is for free. If you go to her website, you can only see portions of the pattern and then you would have to buy her PDF. But if you watch her video, it's all completely free on there. It works up super duper fast. The door to this room does not stay open and I wanted a doorstop. So I put some of my glass beads that I had inside of here to give it a little bit of weight and hold my door open. And I think it turned out real cute. Her pattern actually calls for you to make a pom-pom. I hate making pom-poms because trying to get my scissors to cut through all that is just awful. I use this pom-pom that I bought for hats that I don't use for hats because I don't make hats instead. It's on my bunny's butt. But I love the way this one turned out and I might have once again been craving chocolate while I was making this. This was before I'd hidden chocolate inside of my sloth. I was making what I wanted out of my yarn and it was a chocolate rabbit. Easter's right around the corner and I was thinking of that. The last thing that I made that I was going to show you is this little dinosaur. She is my 
little Easter dinosaur. Did you know there's such a thing? There is. I made it up. That's why it exists. Her name is Leona. She enjoys working puzzles and swimming in koi ponds because she's hungry. She eats the koi. They're good luck, you know. She needs all the luck she can get since she doesn't have arms. That's why she eats koi. I loved this pattern from All From Jade. I haven't done one of her patterns in a little while. Her patterns are really changing. You, you can really tell she's evolving as a designer and making her patterns a little more complex, but very basic. She gave me the option of crocheting a belly patch or crocheting the color along the way. And I chose to crochet it along the way. Then the legs, you leave openings, you make them onto the body after you're finished making the body. The tail was the same way, and I saw that she's fixing to release these little insect things that are like larva and butterfly and caterpillars. They're like articulated. Oh my gosh, I think that's so cool. I'm definitely gonna be getting some of those because I just love the look of that. I love how she is really changing the look of crochet. That's just so awesome. And I think that's everything that I've made over the past couple of weeks. Now, the last things I wanted to show you were a couple of acquisitions that I acquired. That's what acquisitions means, I acquired stuff. I am a very awkward person outside of my home. You think I'm awkward on camera, it's bigger than that. When I go to stores, I am probably one of the few people that really likes the self-checkout because I don't have to make awkward conversation because sure enough, I'm gonna get in that line and I want them to say hello to me. I think that's the right thing to do. And a lot of people won't say hi. I will say things to make them say hi to me. And then they feel awkward. I feel awkward, but doggone it, I got them to greet me and that matters. Or they're really super friendly and we start up a conversation and then I say a Cindy thing and they look at me real weird and I think, oh God, I did it again. I went to a local yarn store here in my area a couple of years ago. I have yet to return. I've never gone to another yarn store since then because it really just left a bad taste in my mouth. And I hate saying that, but you know, sometimes you feel like the ugly stepchild when you go into these places because you do crochet and it seems like they gear a lot of yarn stores towards knitting. These people weren't very friendly. They weren't welcoming. They never stopped knitting themselves to help. When they asked what I did and I said I crocheted and I liked Amigurumi, they just kind of, mm, and they just left me. And I just thought that was really rude. And it just let me know that this is not the place for me. And it's made me scared to go to any yarn store since because I'm afraid I'm gonna say something again that's gonna make people think, mm, no, she doesn't appreciate this. So we're not gonna deal with this one. It's not worth our time. That really offended me and it made me scared to go anywhere else. But I started following Esther at the Argyle Yarn Shop in Brooklyn, New York, and I love her little reels that she does on Instagram. She's really informative and she's cute and she's fun and she knows how to wear a shawl and I love that. I don't know how to wear one and I admire when people know how to wear one, but she's knowledgeable and she doesn't seem like she prefers knitting over crocheters. That matters because we are a whole little population and we spend money too. And we will spend money when we want something. I wanted to support her shop. So I bought these couple of things and I'm glad I did. And she sent me a personal little thank you note. I love that. That matters. Customer service matters. She's always showing neat little things that she has there in the shop. And she sucked me in on these two things. These are actually from Coco Knits. So I'm sure you can find them at other yarn stores or online through Coco Knits. But I wanted to buy them from her because I really like Esther. The first one is this. And this is actually just a little page marker. And you can find page markers similar to this at bookstores, Target. But these are silicone. And so they're a little bit more heavy duty than just paper with the magnet. You can put them on your pattern book and mark your page just like this. If you're like me and you use a metal cart, you can hook it on the side of there and then you can use this other thing that I got myself. This is also from Coco Knits and these are metal stitch markers. And they are the round ones. I don't like locking stitch markers. I know a lot of people really like those. I don't like locking stitch markers, but these are round and metallic. So they stick on here. And instead of finding my stitch markers 
all over the place. I know I still find them all over the place, but I can stick them on here and they're not just floating around everywhere. They could be right on my cart, stuck onto this, and it matches my cart perfectly. So does this one. I love color coordination and these are that. I love notions and bags and she has really beautiful and unique bags and there's one I want so bad. It is a round hat case. Looks like a hat case, but it's a yarn bag. It's a lot of money. I'm not gonna buy it anytime soon, but I'm certainly gonna let my husband know that that's on my mind. I've thought about that bag a lot. I have dreams about carrying a little bag with my yarn in it like that. Very vintage. Go check out Esther's shop. It's worth your time and maybe you'll find something you've liked there too. The very last thing I had was to first say thank y'all so much for all the sweet prayers and well wishes for my mom. We actually have her surgery next week. We're a little nervous. That's probably why this video is a little not my norm. I'm just nervous, a little stressed about what's coming up. She wanted me to be sure to thank y'all so much for all the sweet thoughts and kind words that y'all all said. And then I I wanted to tell you two things that nearly made me cry this week. One was I broke my furls hook. This one is about three or four years old, so it's lived a good life. I have loved it hard and long. I evidently have a very strong grip and I broke it while I was making Wilma the Whale. Thankfully, Furls has a really great customer service policy and they will replace it. I don't think I'll get another Odyssey because they no longer make the Odysseys, but I will be able to get something else in place of it and I appreciate that. I've had to do this a couple of other times. I know that the quality in this is still worth it to me. I love the weight, I love the grip, I love the smoothness of the hook. I've used this so much I've worn the finish off on my hook. That tells you how much I've loved my hook. It has served me well. And the other thing that nearly made me cry was this pretty little thing that I got in the mail from one of y'all. This is from Vicki. She was one of the winners of my thousand subscribers giveaway way back last year and we have kept in touch. We have a lot of similarities. She has a disabled child. We speak a similar language having to deal with things in the world of people with disabilities. She thought enough of me to make this and it has my channel name here on the front. She hand painted the face on this. I absolutely love it and it just about brought me to tears. I don't expect anybody to send me anything. I figured the nicest thing that I can do for anybody is to just make somebody laugh because I feel that laughter and joy is the best gift you can ever share with another person because it's a memory you'll always have is laughing. I would rather remember laughter than tears and so that is something I always try to share share with other people pretty much wherever I go and I make a bit of a fool of myself but it touches me so much that somebody thought enough to make something like this for me. Thank you so much Vicki. It will be back here in the background and I will just truly cherish this and I am so thankful for all of y'all. There's a bunch of new subscribers. Most of my videos aren't this chatty. I'm in a bit of a weird spot right now. Wishing you all a very happy Easter. Thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time here on the Rumi Mill. Bye.